Welcome back to Believe in Colts. I'm Lawrence Owen. With me, as usual, is my guy, Gerard Powers. And Gerard, man, 4th of July weekend. How was your weekend? It was good, man. You know how it is on holiday-type weekends. A bunch of kids running around. Uh, you know, wife wanting you to cook this and clean this and do that. So, you know, your typical holiday weekend. But it was good. How about you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I had my weekend i had my to-do lists just like you were saying you know the wife's like here yeah you know? <laughs> i know there's an actual term for that that people use nowadays but i'm not up to date with a lot of these modern day terms uh <laughs> but um man it's getting close i just we just realized before uh i was we was texting back and forth uh last couple days and and i we just realized I didn't realize we hadn't done a breakdown of the schedule and a prediction for the year, you know, yeah. yet. And I'm yeah. like, holy cow, what? It's good, it's we, good timing. It's good timing for it. Yeah, it's very good timing, man. But, hey, speaking of prediction and futures, I just want everyone to know that our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's Wimbledon Finals, Major League Baseball, the latest fighting news, and even next season's NFL futures. Head over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo, promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to get the bonus and get into that action. Bet online where the game starts. So we're going to get this started off real quick. If you're listening to this on uh, an audio podcast, feel free to go check us out over on YouTube, either Believe Podcast Network or check out Lawrence Owen, Believe in Colts, because we have a little visual here that I'm going to end up sharing here to the screen. Uh, it's got the schedule on here. We got our NFL preseason games and the regular season games, which we're going to go over slowly one by one and we're going to make our picks for each game and i think that works out great because you know we haven't even seen training camp we don't know what some of these new guys look like <laughs> so so this is obviously uh by the time preseason ends and the regular season starts we'll probably do a do-over uh just kind of an update on what we know from from the team itself but as we get started obviously the preseason games not a lot of meaning when it comes to the season. You know, get get a good look at the young guys, right? Right, right. Definitely uh, preseason is for the young guys. Um, and you know with the, the league, with the new rules now, it's only three preseason games. I wonder how teams going forward is going to treat, um, you know, that third preseason game. Are you going to treat that more so like the, the fourth game, how it normally be? Um in the past, or do you treat the second game as your dress rehearsal uh, that's going to be more like a realistic uh, season type game? So it's kind of it's kind of interesting to see the three preseason games and which one will be chosen by teams to take as the serious game uh, to prepare them to get ready for the season. That'll be interesting that you mentioned that because uh, the first preseason game is against the Bills. Uh, I believe we are hosting the Lions at training camp this year. Um, mm -hmm. That would be interesting if we did that, and that was our dress rehearsal. That's that's yeah, something yeah, that, that might be that might be something uh, that teams do. You know, whatever that dress rehearsal game is, maybe going playing uh, practicing against that team for a week, uh, considering that you don't have that extra preseason game and that extra week to kind of get ready for the season. Uh, so I can probably see a lot of teams probably practicing together this year uh, to really, uh, I guess, iron out a few things of, of a week of practice versus a new team and then using that game as a dress rehearsal. I can definitely see that happening, that you brought that up. And then we got the final preseason game where the Colts will be hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Is this the last year for Tom Brady? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> uh, season kicks off right away uh the colts are start the colts have an op won an opening game of the season for years years and there can't be a better team to open the season off with in hopes for a victory than going to houston right definitely uh especially with what houston has had going on the past couple years and uh considering that 
you know, we're not looking at Houston uh, to, to kind of threaten anybody in the division to win it. But at that same token, Houston have been a, a kind of a rival of the Colts, um, you know, over the past few years. And uh, we know it's a game that you can't take lightly. But with the Texans being our opener, uh, I think we definitely got to take advantage of uh, this situation and uh, kind of get off to a hot, fast start that we need to get off to. Absolutely. Last year, the Indianapolis Colts in both games that they played against them, um, the total score was 62 to three. I mean, wow. Uh, The Colts scored 31 points in each game and they only gave up a field goal between the two games. I mean, gee, many Christmas. But you know what? Uh, These two teams know each other very well. They're AFC South rivals. So, um, you know, I, I hate to say any given Sunday, especially when it comes to division rivals but it, it that is the truth and on Sunday it could happen you can be beaten that's for sure and but I got the Colts winning that game starting yeah. off and ending that right you you as well winning and I got the coach winning uh bit like looking good while we win this one I think the coach get off to a hot start and it, it looks good to the fans eye uh per se but I think everybody will know that you know that's not the team or the Texans is not the opponents that we're trying to get ready uh, to beat in this division as far as in the AFC period. So, I mean, we expect the Colts to look good versus the Texans. Well, week two, September 18th at 1 o'clock, the Colts go to the dreaded Jacksonville Jaguars. The Colts haven't won in Jacksonville in, I can't remember. It's been so long, my goodness. Uh, I get that, you know, Florida teams, they have that home field advantage because of the heat and humidity, right? I mean, the Patriots have always had trouble with Miami in Miami. The Mm -hmm. Colts have had troubles with Jacksonville in Jacksonville. Tampa Bay generally does pretty good as well uh, at home. What are we looking at? Can the Colts actually get over that hump and get that first win against Jacksonville at their house? I think I think we're going to get over the hump. And I think with how the season ended for us last year, this is a game that we kind of uh, want to get past. We kind of want to make sure we go to Jacksonville, handle business like we know how to handle business and put all the stuff that happened last year and the start of this year behind us. Uh, so going forward as a fan, we, ain't, we don't got any type of bad memories like we can't afford to even make this game look competitive if that makes sense like we don't want Jacksonville up in the third or we got to come back in the foot we don't need any of that nonsense happening uh so I'm expecting the coach the first two weeks to really get off to a hot good start I mean Jacksonville obviously we know what they're they've been going through uh you know Urban Meyer being fired new defensive coordinator and Mike Caldwell uh so a lot of new faces new changes over there uh definitely have talent to beat anybody obviously uh, but you would think that, you know, we're further along ahead as far as in our process and what we want to achieve in Jacksonville. And like you said, it can happen any given Sunday. But the start of the year, uh, I hope everybody is dialed and locked in so we can get off to a 2-0 and start. Yeah, I, I'm going to agree with you. I like the Colts uh, in this one. You know, knocking two things off their shoulders, right? Uh, right off the bat, week one, uh, get that monkey off their shoulder. And then week two, go into Jacksonville, defeat them. Now, the, the thing, again, you know, you kind of touched on it. Jacksonville's got a lot of talent, a lot, but it's all new talent, right? Yeah. And they haven't really had that time to, you know, get cohesive with each other. They got new head coach. They got new everything out there. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, you know, there for a while, did not look good last year. He looked good against the Colts in the last game of the season. But for the, for the most part, he was out there throwing picks and stuff. So, um, but yeah, make no mistake. They've got a ton of, of, uh, good players, especially out there on the offense. This defense will need to go out there and lock that down. Uh, week three, man, uh, this should be the first, you know, according to most people week three, September 25th at one o'clock Eastern, uh, the chiefs come to Indy with their first home game for the Colts. Yeah. And I think this would be the, the the first test to to say, do we have that team that can compete in the AF, AFC? You know, a team that can really uh, hold its own and be at the top at the end of the year. I mean, you got a Chiefs team that, you know, and lost Tyreek Hill, lost a couple pieces. So they're going to have a new identity 
uh, on offense. I don't think it's going to be the Chiefs of old, you know, the things that they've looked like in the past. I think we're going to, you know, see a different style or a rebrand uh, type Chiefs, and they're going to look good. I still think they're going to be one of the top teams in the AFC, and I think it's a good opportunity for us to get them early in the year to kind of prove and show what we need to improve on, uh, what we're good at, what we're not good at, you know, in the first part of the season. But I do believe this will be a tough matchup for us. And if we're going to lose a game uh, uh, within the first four, because uh, how I normally break down the season is in quarters. I know we got the extra you know, game this season with 17, but I normally break it down by fours. Uh, so if we can I, I can see us maybe losing a close one here. First nail biter, first, you know, uh, I guess big head honcho type ma uh, matchup with the Chiefs. And uh, this this one at home, unfortunately, at home. So, Colt fans, don't get mad at me for this, even though I know it's going to be a great atmosphere. Was at the game last year when we played the Chiefs at home. But uh, I do think that this is one that we can possibly slip up in. All right. So when, when I first looked at this, my brain just went back to, okay, our team is built to beat the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. They were built to beat the Texans, which, you know, when Watson was there and then they had that high flying offense, you know, right. uh, they're, they're built to beat teams like Buffalo, who, you know, uh, the Ravens that they haven't right. been able to beat the Ravens, but it's always been really good. They've always had, you know, two, three score leads going into the fourth quarter, that kind of stuff. Last time we played the Chiefs, the Colts kind of handed it to him uh now granted Mahomes Mahomes is a little bit hobbled right mm -hmm. and and he didn't have Tyree kill uh in that game but you know he's not going to have Tyree kill this game either uh he's got a rookie that he's going to be working with um and as you said they're going to kind of rebrand how they're going to do things I like the Colts at home in this game now before Hill was traded and I first saw this schedule and i was like oh my goodness this could be a 17 point blowout for the colts just because of the way you know i like you know the matchups the way the colts are colts and chiefs if this was a different team i think you know the colts might have problems but it depends upon how how, how they rebrand themselves are they going to be more of a you know running type style defense and more physical or offense and then more physical on defense that's interesting i'm still going to give it to the colts because um, as you said, the atmosphere um, in Lucas Oil is going to be really, really good. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to do a 17 point game anymore, <laughs> even with Hill missing. And it's mainly because Hill is missing because the Colts aren't going to. I mean, Travis Kelsey's there. I mean, historically, the Colts have had trouble with really good tight ends. So, you know, I think, I, lot, I think a lot of people forget uh, the the speed the Chiefs had. It wasn't just mm -hmm. Tyreek Hill, you know. No. You know, Hartman and all those guys that was uh, just kind of waiting their turn or waiting to be involved mm -hmm. in the offense. Uh, so I just think now with the Chiefs going forward, uh, normally defenses just focus in on your top two guys, which is Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. And your whole game plan is just to stop those two guys, you know. And uh, I think going forward now for them, it kind of gives them a sense of, knowing how defenses are going to attack them because obviously right now you got to stop Travis Kelsey so your whole game plan first and foremost would be to kind of limit uh Travis Kelsey the best way you can of course like you said our matchup versus the Chiefs does favor I mean we got linebackers that can run that can cover uh got guys in the secondary can do that but the the part that scares me a little bit is the matchups that we kind of just look a you know not not look away but kind of just not really giving enough attention to and it's going to be those guys that are going to be put in situations to guard fast guys that we haven't given the credit to just because they haven't done the things that Tyreek Hill has done but I think uh, some of those fast speed guys that they they got are going to get the opportunities that Tyreek Hill was getting and uh, it's just a matter of they're going to take advantage of them yeah there's a coach in the NFL that can scheme up uh, their third fourth fifth guy uh to beat our third fourth fifth guy out there in a the secondary or something like that it's andy reed so yeah. um i'll i i understand I st i'm still going to go up the home team though uh yeah, that was a hard pick for me because i kind of want to go 
coats at home too, especially with me thinking that they're going to get off to a hot start. So you'll kind of be licking your chops, you know, getting ready for Kansas City. Uh, but, you know, at that same token, I mean, I'm, I'm still trying to give Kansas City the championship respect that I felt like they've earned over the past few years. So until they show me different, I kind of got to give them the respect they deserve. <laughs> in moving the pre in preseason anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, moving on, uh, October 2nd, 1 o'clock, another 1 o'clock game. Colts generally hold a lot of those. Uh, Titans come to the Indy. Oh, this is this is that division rival game. This is that game. We got swept by the Titans last year. Uh, now this is a team looks very different on offense. Very, very different. Their entire wide receiving core looks different now. What are you looking at uh, on October second versus the Titans? I think I think the Titans are going to have to um, that first the first part of the season, those first four games of the season. I think it's going to be very important for the Titans to get off to a hot start. I mean, they've had a tremendous uh, regular season uh, the past couple years, past three three years, however long it's been. They've they've done great in the regular season, and it's you know for for most of the part is Derrick Henry, but they have always had that threat. At, at, like you said, at the wide rep, uh, receiver position that we had to account for. And that was A.J. Brown, Julio, and those guys. You had to account for those guys, knowing that Derrick Henry is the face of the franchise, the face of that offense. Uh, so going forward, um, you know, with everybody knowing you got to stop Derrick Henry, which everybody's been trying to stop Derrick Henry the past few years, and nobody's figured it out yet. Um, I do believe at home we beat the Titans uh, to start the year. Um, and I do think it's going to come down between us and the Titans and winning that division and the rivalry that these two teams has formulated over the past few years, which goes back past than the past few years. But with the Titans being, I guess, the the head of the division the past couple of years, if we want to put it that way, uh, I think it's going to be some good football, interesting football for us to kind of take that crown back. I think the Titans are kind of – let people know that they're going to ground and pound you and trying to be more physical and doing all those things. So it's just a matter if we're going to be able to stop Derrick Henry or not. And I think we got the defense to do it this year. Yeah, I like the defense, uh, our defense versus their offense. Um, uh, our problem last year was, you know, uh, we had to focus not just on Derrick Henry, but we had to worry about the passing game as well with, mm -hmm. with Ryan Tannehill and his threats that he had out there. Uh, I think the Colts, when they know the run is coming and can focus on the run, they're very good run defense. Um, so the Titans are going to have to show early in the season, hey, you're going to have to, you know, take account that Ryan Tannehill has weapons. You just don't see him yet. Um, right. That's that's the only way I think the Colts don't stop the run game early on. Uh, I like the Colts again uh, at home. I got them 4-0 so far, dude. Yeah, I got them three and one, which yep. I'll take four and zero. I'll take four and zero if we can get it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I'll tell you what. Um, I don't think Mike Vrabel gets enough credit for being the coach of that team. I think Mike Vrabel is the face, in my opinion. I mean, you got Derrick Henry there, but Vrabel's defense is just so darn like. No, they're well. They don't. They are incredibly well coached, and 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 they don't get caught out of position. Uh, they they know exactly what's going on. Uh, they, they're just a very well, look what they did to Buffalo right last year. Yeah, no, Vrabel does a great job. I mean, the some of the principles and some of the different things he learned from that you know Patriot system, and then going to the Texans with his uh, short time with the Texans or whatnot. Um, I think he's done a great job in taking over as the head man of the Titans since he's been there and establishing his own identity. And like I say, when you think of the Titans, it's a style of play that they play. You know what you're going to get. It's going to be a physical uh, football game. And, uh, and more times out of not, the more physical team is going to win whenever you're playing against the Titans. That's how they lose. It's just you got to kind of punch them in the mouth and keep punching because they're going to punch back. That's just who they are. That's their identity, and uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't think Vrabel gets enough credit as far as uh, being one of the top coaches in the NFL just off of the things that he's done. Moving on to the fifth game of the year, October 6th, 8, 15 p.m. That's a Thursday night football game. Uh, Indy travels to Denver, mile high. 
uh, guys, uh, if you're listening or watching to this, this is the first loss I'm giving to Indy. Um, I'm uh, and, and, and it, loss. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, Denver's got a very a stud defense, and they even brought some extra guys in, but that's not what's worrying me. Uh, th their offense, they got a lot of good players on the offense and went out and got themselves a quarterback that is time tested since. 2012 right in russell right. wilson um yep. so that's that's scary enough let alone the fact we're going to denver mile high stadium on a short week right and i mean that's teams tough. teams already have enough problems dealing with the thin atmosphere you know uh, oxygen and stuff like that on a normal week trying to get up there and do i just Man, this would be a miracle, in my opinion, if the Colts went up there and pulled this off. Yeah, if the Colts win in Denver and pulled this one off, I think it'll just show you a lot about the team uh, as far as from a mental aspect uh, and, and just blocking everybody out and just going to work and just doing your job and expecting to win. But uh, looking at it on paper, it's tough, man. Thursday night football is the hardest game to play in, in the NFL and for it to be a game that you got to travel across the country and do it on a short week. Uh, I feel bad. I mean, I'm if, if I'm if I'm Ballard and uh, Coach Wright, I probably was complaining about that when the schedule came out because normally Thursday night, you you normally play uh, like a divisional game. It's like an, a divisional opponent, even though I know both of those in the AFC. But you play within your division, far as in the AFC South, uh, for those Thursday night games. That's how it normally. Uh, is so this is definitely going to be a tough travel game for us and like you said you're facing a Broncos team that you know on paper in the preseason look like they're going to be you know tough to deal with as well so I do got Broncos winning that one uh, because of the conditions and, and some of the things we're going to have to do uh, to get there and play moving on oh, they got a 10-day period where they can sit and chill and, and wait uh, whoa hey I messed that up didn't I all right, let's get back down here. And October 16th, Jacksonville comes to Indy. I, I don't see a problem here. Yeah, I think we're running that one. I got us sweeping Jacksonville this year. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. We've already discussed Jacksonville. Jacksonville don't beat Indy in Indy very often. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they, they have Indy's number at home, but not in Indy. So we're going to move on. Um uh, the very next week, Colts at Tennessee. I'm, a lot of people think that the Colts are going to sweep Tennessee. I don't think so. I, I think the Colts are going to split with them. Um, being that they got swept last year, I think this year this is a situation, like I said, Vrabel is a very good coach. Uh, he'll see some tendencies. He'll see how the, the, the Colts offense is playing. Um, I think at home, I think Indy's going to lose this game um, uh, in in Tennessee in this one. Uh, what do you, what do you got? Yeah, I got the Titans winning at home. I, I got them splitting as well. Uh, it's going to be a tough environment. We know how Tennessee can get at home, especially if they start off uh, hot like we think the Titans might start off. You know, if, if they go into that game with only a couple losses, one or two and they're feeling good about themselves, that's going to be a tough environment uh, to play in, tough game to play in, especially knowing that's the second one, too. So uh, in a lot of instances, we it might be like a must-win type for us, knowing you know, that this game can come back on us uh, late December, late January, fighting for playoff positions and all that type of stuff. So even though I feel like it's going to be an important game for us to win, I do think the Titans uh, will split with us and, uh, you know, and, and be able to beat us at home. Well, you know, I'd rather split uh, personally than get swept by them. Um, so like like what happened last year. So uh, that is a move in the positive direction for the Indianapolis Colts uh, this year compared to last year. Uh, the next week we host Carson Wentz. Wow. Yeah, I, I, and that's going to be a fun game to watch. Uh, you know Carson's going to be motivated, but I think – just overall, team-wise, I think we, we we got more than enough to handle the Commanders, even though I do think that the Commanders are going to be very competitive and going to be, you know, a decent football team. It's just so much going on, 
you know, over there. It seemed like every offseason, uh, you just don't see how they're going to get it done. But in Coach Rivera and uh, some of the people they got over there now, I mean, these are guys, old school type guys, that they'll find a way to get those guys going. But at that same token, I feel like it would be too much for them to handle. So I got us winning that one. Oh, man. The commanders, when healthy, their defensive line might be the best in football. They're good. Uh, they are very, very, very good. Um, so, you know, this could be the – I mean, obviously the game versus Denver, you know, uh, the right tackle will probably be going up against Bosa a lot. But in this game, he's going up against Chase, and he's a scary dude. So, um, yeah, I, I got Indy winning this game, but – don't be surprised if the commander's defense make Indy work for it really more than what you expect. Be a prime time game too. It's going to be loud in Lucas Oil, so that that might Absolutely. be the fans have to bring that one home for. Us. So you know, let's we'll, let, we'll get we'll get that. I'll guarantee there'll be enough people there, especially right before Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Game after that, last year, the Indianapolis Colts got a monkey off their shoulder and beat the New England Patriots uh, off the legs of Jonathan Taylor. I mean, everybody has seen that clip of him just saying, later, uh, yeah. and, and closing that game out. This time, Indy goes to Foxborough and faces the Patriots on November 6th. What are you looking at here? I think this is going to be a tough one. I think it might be one of those uh, situations to where both teams might see each other later on uh, in the playoffs. So I do believe that it's one of those games to where uh, it, it'll be a playoff type vibe, a playoff type atmosphere. I think the the Patriots, especially coming off the loss last year to the Colts, their fans and their cry. Everybody know how much the Patriots hates the Colts, how much Bill Belichick hates the Colts and vice versa. And that's what makes – that's why I think football needs these two teams rivalry-wise to get back where it used to be, even though I know the Patriots have won the majority of the last few times these the two teams have played. But I do think the Patriots revenge their loss, and I do think that they're going to be better than they were last year. Uh, what we saw from them last year with Mac Jones and all the – and, uh, you know, the young team that they had, I thought they had a great year just off of the circumstances that they had. So you can only think that they're going to be better than what they were last year. And I do think that they avenged the loss uh, at home and they win that one. Well, you got them five and four at this point. I do. Yep. It's still winning, winning. Um, so I agree that the Patriots will be better this year than what they were last year. And we're talking about a Patriots team that went to the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You talk about they had a bunch of new people, uh, whether it was uh, rookies or guys they signed in, right? Wide receivers, two tight ends, a bunch of, bunch of different people over there. The difference is their defense. I think the Colts all the, – okay, so I think their offense will be better this year than what they were last year because, you know, the connection between Mac Jones and – and all, all the both tight ends and 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 the different wide receivers that they have. Uh, don't forget, they went and picked up a uh, Devonte Parker, right mm -hmm. from from Miami, who was a guy that uh, Nikhil Harry. They wanted Nikhil Harry to be that type of receiver. Couldn't do it. Parker, when healthy, is one of the best at it. So you know that that's the thing. I think the Colts offense versus the Patriots defense will be able to keep up though because. Okay. Um, they still have age at safety, uh, even though they went out and got some young guys. I don't think they're going to start the young guys. They did get Jabril Peppers in the off season, but we'll see how that works out. I just, I like our offense versus the Patriots defense. This is a game I think is going to be very, very, very good to watch. Uh, this is one of those games. I think it's going to be a, a three point game. Um, I, I, I probably won on the last drive of the game, maybe even overtime. Yeah, I can see you know, that. Definitely, definitely this, close game for sure. Uh, I, I'm going to edge the Colts in this one because I think the Colts just have a better overall team than the Patriots do. Um, but I would not be surprised if the Patriots, like you say, are able to hold hold on at their home uh, in their home stadium and, and, and pull the victory off. But I'm going to give the edge right now to Indy. Got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. The very next I week, got we got, huh? 
No, I say I got you on that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I can, I can see that happen. Yeah. Colts at Raiders, November 13th, 4 o'clock game. What you looking at? See, see this is when I think the, the Colts kind of figure it out. I think in the first half of the season, it's kind of up and down-ish. Uh, defense trying to hold it together. Offense win a game here or there, look bad maybe the next game or so. I think I think the offense and defense up to this point is playing off of one another and just trying to figure it out. But I think this one, with it being in November, meaning that everything will be on the line by this time, every win or every loss really counts by the time November hits. I think the Colts win a tough road matchup on the road to in Las Vegas and beat the Raiders and from there go on a little win streak heading towards December football. All right. So breaking down the Raiders, the Colts and the Raiders, the Colts have had trouble with the Raiders for a decade now. Um, they they just don't. I think they've won one game out of the matchups that they've had with them. Derek Carr is a stud, in my opinion. Uh, anyone who could go through the situation that he went through with the whole head coach situation, with the whole wide receiver situation, pull his team together and pull and not only pull them together but get them to the playoffs right yeah. be a team that was expected to go to the playoffs in week 6 or week 17 to get into the playoffs it was an amazing situation and on top of that now he's got arguably the best receiver in football you know um from Devontae Adams mm -hmm. plus even though we got Yannick and Gakway from the Raiders they went and was like, you know what? I think we, the only reason we was able to get him was because of the guy that they picked up to fill his spot, who Chandler Jones is a phenomenal in, in the NFL. Um, this is just a game. I think the Raiders are a very, very good team this year. Um, I, if it was at Indy, I might go the other way, but I, I've got the Colts losing a tough one. Um, it's going to be difficult to hold down Adams and Hunter Renfro. I just, man, it, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult. Be difficult. I think it's, I mean, it's definitely going to be difficult. I mean, but you look at any other team with receivers, mm -hmm. that was going to be difficult. I just think at some point the coach are going to have a win, a big game on the road. And I think that's going to be the game. It happens uh, to kind of start that momentum heading into, like I said, December football, January football, they know they're going to have to win a big one on the road, and it's going to have to be versus one of the top teams in the AFC. And like you said, at that time, at this point, I feel like the Raiders will be, you know, one of the top two, three teams in the AFC just as a as a whole general far as record. They're going to be one of the better teams, uh, and I, I just think the coach are going to have to prove that they can beat. Uh, one of these top teams is going to be sitting at that spot and that's going to be their opportunity. And I think, like I said, from there going forward, I think we run off a couple big wins in a row to kind of set us up uh, as far as in the division and the playoff seating. Okay. Moving on, the Eagles, Philadelphia. Nick Sirianni uh, comes to Indy and faces his old head coach, and Frank Reich, uh, November 20th at 1 o'clock. What are you looking at here? Eagles are going to be a good football team this year, I believe. I think they're going to take a step forward uh, compared to what they did last year. And we're talking about a playoff team uh, as well. Uh, but I do think the Colts win this one. I think uh, the Colts, by this time, after that Raiders win, they figure out, you know, who what they're going to look like offensively. I think the defense, uh, you know, get their kinks and stuff out. I think, like I said, I just think the Colts figure it all out about the middle of the season to where, uh, like I said, these next few games are here. I just see us winning. Uh, I see us beating the, the Eagles at home, and it might be decisive. I mean, we might beat them by, uh, you know, 10 points or so. I just feel like we'll be playing really good football you know, when we're supposed to be playing good football, which, like I said, November, December football, you want your team to be playing almost at its best during those times. Yeah, I got the Indianapolis Colts winning. Again, uh, the Colts defense does very, very well against scrambling type quarterbacks. And there's, you know, Jalen Hurts. That's what Jalen Hurts is. Um, and, and, my, and, and you also got to know, uh, 
these two head coaches for these teams know each other incredibly well. Um, but Nick Sirianni is going to have to look, you know, we, we don't have our former defensive coordinator no more. We got Gus Bradley now. So that's a little bit different for him. Um, I think, but again, this will, this will be interesting. I think you're right. I think, I think the Colts handle the Eagles at home and handle them well. I do think that the Eagles probably, I think they have a real, real shot at winning their division this year, even with the Cowboys there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I like the Colts at home as well. Um, talk about other games that are just a difficult to handle. The Steelers come to Indy the week later. Uh, yeah, Monday night football, the first Monday night football game, if I rem if if I'm correct here. Um, hosting the Steelers, though, man, that is a. Yeah, we don't know what their offense is going to look like, but we know what their defense looks like. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, Steelers, that's definitely going to be a tough matchup. I mean, obviously, Mike Tomlin, if not the best coach in the NFL, one of the best coaches in the NFL. And even though they got their questions on the offensive side of the ball, you just got to know that he's going to have the Steelers in position to get in the playoffs or whatever the case may be. So you know it's going to be a big-time game. But, again, I feel like – at home, prom time game, a lot of stuff on the line. I feel like we handle our business, whether it's a game we win on the last second field goal or we go out there and do what we're supposed to do. I feel like the Colts win this big time prom time game versus Steelers at home. All right. The Colts last year did very well. They didn't win every prime time game that they played, but they played very well. Um, uh, against every opponent that they played in prime time. Um, uh, this is a game, again, uh, this Steelers defense is very aggressive, very opportunistic. Uh, but I'm looking at the Steelers offense and going, who's going to be the quarterback, right? Is, is it going to be Mitch Trubisky? Is it going to be Kenny Pickett, right? Uh, how's their offensive line, right? Uh, last year, their offensive line was not very good. And you're going to, put Mitch Trubisky, who, you know, we all already know what he looks like behind a bad offensive line back in Chicago. Uh, and and then, you know, Kenny Pickett, you don't want to put a rookie behind a, a terrible offensive line. I mean, uh, very few rookie quarterbacks do well like that. I mean, there's only so many Joe Burrows out there. Uh, <laughs> so I agree with you. I think the Colts win this game, but uh, it could be ugly. This could be one of those, you know, you might see five or six turnovers in this game, right? Not not just what, I mean, total, you know, between no. both teams, right? Because the Steelers are good at creating turnovers. The Colts are good at creating turnovers. This could just be a sloppy game, especially, you know, I, I know that you you think that uh, the Colts are, 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 you know, I mean, they'll find a way to win. And that's the thing about this team this year. With Carson Wentz last year, we found a way to lose games. This year, it seems like the Colts are finding ways to win games. That's a, that's what we're predicting it looks like. Uh, heading in December. See, uh, this one versus the Cowboys at, at Dallas is the one, and it's a primetime game. This is the one I feel like we'll slip up and we'll lose this one. Uh, I feel like uh, we, we would have been in gain a ton of momentum, winning some big games, you know, there the past few weeks or whatnot. And this would be the one that we'll kind of look and be like, what the hell did we just do today versus the Cowboys? Uh, it's just something about playing in Dallas primetime games. Uh, I played there a few times. And even though you're ready to go and you're excited about the atmosphere and all those type things, it plays a role. In, in how the flow of the game go and the, the feel of the game. And Dallas thrives off that. You know, Dak thrives off primetime games at home. And I can see us slipping up and maybe losing this one uh, in Dallas. Now, a lot of Colts fans are going to go, well, three years ago, we we pitched yeah. a shutout against Dak and that team, right? Yeah. But this yeah. defense is not the same defense, right? Right. This is this is this is not the same team three years ago. Just like the Colts is not the same team from three years ago. Uh, a lot of new faces, a lot of new uh, uh, situation all the way around. Um, 
and in December, you're finding like in December, you're going to play against teams that are playing their best ball at the end of the day, you know, bearing injuries and, you know, things like that. You know, normally when you're playing these primetime games in December is because the other team is pretty good. Uh, so, you know, you got to kind of throw that in there, too. In December, a lot of a lot of teams, especially the Cowboys, are probably going to be picked to win their division. You know, they're going to be playing for, you know, you know, certain things in December. So uh, I expect a good Cowboy team this year. I, I, I do, even though Philly has a chance to dethrone them, I, I do think the Cowboys win that division. Uh, so I do think it will be a tough game for us. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give them a loss, too. Just because, um, again, uh, this it, it's going to be in December. Uh, it's going to be warm in Dallas. Uh, it's going to be cold here. So um, and it's also a, a long trip. Uh, this is this is going to be an interesting game. We talk about prime time. I think they I think they play well, um, but it could go either way. I really don't have a good feel on how the Cowboys are going to be this year, though. That's that's the thing with Amari Cooper uh, now gone. Uh, this this could be, um, yeah. I, I think Dak could miss him. Uh, really, Gallup, uh, CD Lamb. They had good years uh, last year as well. Yes, they did. But you know, uh, Cooper, Dak didn't look good until Cooper showed up. You know what I mean? So that's we'll see how things work. He 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 really he didn't he didn't look that good until until Amari Cooper Amari Cooper showed up and all of a sudden I don't know I just feel like it's the reason why they let Amari Cooper walk. I think if Amari Cooper was who we thought Amari Cooper was, he'll still be a Cowboy. That's how I look at it. I think I think it was because of money because I don't think the Cowboys they already threw so much money away uh, to different players. I don't. I think they had to let somebody go. Yeah, I I, I get you, but man, personally, I would have let Zeke go. But man, that would have been a lot of money off the books. Then uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Zeke. A, a lot of people talked about Zeke not having a good year last year. He still rushed for over four yards of carry. You know, yeah, still was, and it was better than his year uh, prior. And then. Uh, you know, with the Amari, you know, situation or whatnot, if, you know, you, you sign a four-year, $100 million deal, whatever the case it, it, it may be, if you don't live up to it and you got two young receivers that's getting the bulk of the catches and, you know, same type talent, you know, you might you might let Amari walk as well. Yeah, we'll we'll see how they go. Uh, it'll be interesting to watch the Cowboys this year, even though uh, I, I have a lot of fans that follow me that are not Cowboy lovers. Uh, I'll not, tell you that much. I, I, I wish for the Cowboys to lose every week. <laughs> That's a lot of my a lot of my followers feel the exact same way. I respect uh, them. They're a good team. I respect them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, following that, December 18th. Hey, that's my dad's birthday. Uh, Colts go to Minnesota to be determined. This could be a primetime game. It may not be. It depends upon really, you know, at this point of year with four games left in the season, are both these teams in the playoff hunt? If they are, there's a chance this could be a primetime game. I predicted the Patriots-Colts game, which was a to-be-determined game, to be a primetime game because I figured both would be in the playoff hunt. It was. I don't know. I don't know about this one. Um, I, I expect the Colts to be in the playoff hunt. The Vikings may be, depending upon um, how Green Bay looks this year. Uh, but they go to Minnesota. What are you looking at at this game? I think we beat them. Uh, I do think it's a close game. I mean, obviously, I mean, everybody knows Minnesota's offense with the weapons that they have. Uh, you know, they got some of the better weapons in the NFL when you're talking Thielen and Jefferson and uh, Cook at Cook. running back. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, obviously at quarterback, um, I just went blank dead. Kirk Cousins. Uh, Kirk Cousins. You know, I, I think he don't get the respect that uh, he probably deserves in the league. But I do think Kirk Cousins is, you know, I put him on that same level as um, as Carr, you know, with Oakland. Uh, I think you got, you know, guys that can light you up if you're not prepared or not ready to go. It's just when, you know, they get their time in the big moments, some always happen. But I've always respected Kirk Cousins enough to think that he was one of the better NFL quarterbacks, you know, in the league. So I do think it's going to be a tough game. I don't know how good the Vikings defense 
is going to be this year. You know, in the past, I've, they've normally always had a, a pretty good defense. But I think the Colts will bounce back off of a loss from the Cowboys, and they win this one in Minnesota. Ah, uh, all right. Um, Yeah, so if the Colts lose to the Cowboys, the Colts beat the Vikings. If the Colts beat the Cowboys, I think the Colts lose to the Vikings. Uh, one of these games, because this you're looking at a really tough stretch right there the last uh, five games, right? The Patriots, the Raiders, the Eagles, the Steelers, and the Cowboys. And then you walk into the, the Vikings. This is just a situation where you might have a letdown game, right? Uh, if the Colts beat the Cowboys, they might have a let. But I got the Colts losing to the Cowboys, so this would be a bounce back. Uh, in, in, in my opinion. Um, so I think again, you know, they got a very good offense. Uh, the Vikings do, we you already named off all those guys. They got, uh, a young tight end that's been there a couple of years now as well. Um, they, they, yeah, this is, they're going to be fighting. I think this is going to be a, a high scoring game, uh, between both clubs. Uh, but I think the Colts edge it out. Um, yeah, that's because I got them losing to the Cowboys though. Uh, moving on the other Monday night football game against the chargers hosting the chargers the day after Christmas. Yeah. Day after Christmas, hope hosting the chargers, which they're coming from a tough division themselves. And I do think the chargers are going to have a good year. Uh, this year as well. I think they're going to be one of the better teams in the NFL. This will be a game, the, the another big game, but with us being at home prime time, I think we defend our home field stadium. The Chargers got to fly cross country uh, and do all those things that we were talking about the coach having to do, you know, playing against the Raiders or whatnot. So I do think it affects the uh, Chargers, especially late in the year day after Christmas and a lot of chaos is going on. So you'd rather be at home during that week rather than having to travel on the road. I think that plays a part in it. And I do think the Colts will beat the Chargers at home late in the year. The Chargers have a lot of older players on their team um, that, that are uh, in di different, different places. They got a lot of youth as well. But the one thing the Chargers have had issues with is injuries to prime players like whether it's bosa or whether it's their safety right or or um you know you know williams is you get to that point uh you got you got all different types of guys and we're late in the season right um uh, if the colts can stay healthy themselves i i like the colts especially at home uh again the chargers a lot of people are picking the chargers to win the west this year mm -hmm. um i think i think the colts are going to turn some heads in this game this is a game where the Colts always play tough teams tough. And I think this is going to be a very, very good game. And this will be a game, I think, that will really put Matt Ryan in a spotlight, right? I, I think this is a game where Matt Ryan will probably have to throw a bit in this game. And I think he'll be able to do so. And you could see a couple, couple players – um, offensively really makes some big numbers against this Charger secondary. Uh, we got next game. We're going to hurry up and get through these last two games real quick because I don't see them losing either of these games. Uh, the Giants, look, last year I watched the Giants. There were games where I sat there, watched the ball snapped, where the other team would snap the ball on offense, and the entire front seven stood up with their hands on their hips. <laughs> I kid you not. All right, I watched snaps like that on the on the 53, and I'm like, or on the coaches, and I'm like, yeah, I don't. That's that's not good. That's not good at all. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I got the coach winning this one for sure. In New oh, York. definitely. So, even in New York, I I don't see this even being close. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm I'm with you. I agree. All right, moving on. Last game of the year. Last year, last year we lost the last two games. This year, we butter not. Um, we host the, the Texans, okay? Uh, this is a to-be-determined game. I don't think it's going to be moved to a primetime game because I don't see the Texans being in any kind of shape, way, or form of being fighting for a playoff spot, even though this is a divisional game and the Colts, you know, have a shot. The Colts might be sitting starters in this game, you know? Possibly. So, yeah, possibly. 
So, I, I mean, yeah, I'm with you. I think the Colts definitely win this game handily. Hopefully, uh, we we d- are not fighting for, I guess, playoff position. And hopefully by this, we, we will have been in clinch to one or two seed and we know exactly where we're headed and, and who we're going against in the playoffs. But if not, uh, I do do think that we still will have enough and be be dialed in and focused enough to take care of the Texans and uh, make sure we finish the year off strong, especially coming off how we ended last year with the opportunity, big opportunity sitting right in front of us and um, ending it, ending it the way we did. I think we kind of rebound and be a mature football team, and we see, you know, a good product on the field this year. So we got the Colts finishing off the season four and zero. That's mm-hmm. That's a big difference compared to what happened last year, right? Uh, record wise, I think I had them 11 and six, I believe, yeah. or maybe 12 and five. I think, all right. So I got, I got beating the Texans. I got, I, I started writing them down, then lost track. Yeah, uh, for two and oh to start. I think you had them beating the Chiefs. I had them, uh-huh. uh huh. I had them. Yeah, we both had them winning at home versus the Titans. I had the Broncos win. We both had the Broncos winning. And then uh, both decided that we'll beat Jacksonville. We both agreed that we'll lose in Nashville. I had uh, Colts beating Washington. Uh, so I did I. As well, I had the Patriots beating the Colts. I think you might have. Did you yep. agree with that? Oh No, agree. no. I had the Colts yeah. beating the Patriots. Yep, yep. But I, I had the. Yeah, I was about to say. I think I had the the Colts beating the Raiders on the road, or did I say the no? Yeah, you yeah you you had the Colts yeah, beating the Raiders. Yeah, I said the Colts beat the Raiders on the road in a big and, game. Uh, yep, and I said the Raiders win, yep. and then the Eagles. I think we both have the Colts beating the Eagles. Yeah, and then I said the, the Colts beat the Steelers. I don't know. Yeah, so did I. Okay, I had the Cowboys beating the Colts at home. Yes. And then we both had them winning the and last. Then we had, yep. Yeah. I got yeah. us going 13 wins, man. I think yeah. you got us going 12. Uh, 12, yep, yeah. 12 and 5. So that's, wow. You know, that's a that's a heck of a season. 12 or 13 wins. Now, that's best case scenario, obviously, uh, if we don't have any serious injuries just by going by the roster, right? Right, right. And just knowing twelve and five, we might be fighting for dang wild card. You just never know how <laughs> it ends up. As far as at the end of the year, you know, yep. with everybody having good records. So that twelve and five, eleven and six, you know, type record, I mean, we'll definitely be fighting for playoff spots because, you, like you said, you'll have your teams that's thirteen and four, fourteen and three. We'll definitely have a couple of uh, teams like that. Hopefully, it's us. But I think I think we're gonna lose at least five. Well, thanks everybody for watching and listening, whether you're listening on uh, uh, an audio podcast somewhere or watching here live on YouTube. Please don't forget to smash that like button, share this, download it, whatever it is you could do to help us get this out. We appreciate you very, very much. And this was Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. I'm Lawrence Owen. That's Gerard Powers. And as usual, go Colts. Go Colts.